Terry from D-Lab. Project of the day, convert an EL34 based 100 watt Marshall amp into a KT66 amp. As you know, the EL34s are fairly fragile. Most guys complain that their Marshalls burn up after a good performance. So we're gonna go with the KT66s and see what that does to this machine. All right, so first step, of course, get these EL34s out of the amp. And we're going to put in these beautiful Tungsil KT66s. This output transformer is going, and we got the new one that's going to go in its place. And uh, we'll reset the bias and give her a check. So my first step, I'm going to change out the output transformer. First issue I see is the distance between centers on these mounts is approximately two and seven eighths of an inch. And the new one I'm going to put in is actually around three and a half. So what I'm thinking here is I sure can't push the transformer towards the tubes. So we got, uh, looks like about a half inch of space here that we're dealing with. So I'm going to move the location of this screw hole over. And she should drop in, I hope. Of course, the other issue is you can see the wiring coming up from the primary side, but you can't see the secondary side because it's buried underneath this uh, turret board. So I'm going to have to remove that to get the transformer out. All right, so the turret board is loose. So I should be able to get to the wiring underneath, no problem. I've dropped out the, uh, the speaker select switch and desoldered the ground here. And, you know, if you're ever going to do this and you're not real sure what you're up to, it's always a good idea to take a camera and take some pictures of how things were so that you can uh, go back and look at your documentation. It makes the uh, new hookup a little bit easier. So rather than desoldering the wires off the transformer, it's always best to take some clippers and just cut them off with uh, you know the color code left behind, so that you'll have uh, you know a little more ease and connector back up. We're only going to lose about a quarter inch of wire, so uh, this will make the uh, reassembly much easier. Give you a little road map. So the transform is disconnected and I've got these uh, little offset long nose so I can reach under the turret board and get that on the nut and be able to unscrew from the top, no problem. So I have all the hardware off of this monster. Now she should lift right on out. Get the other one ready to go on. I've got the new transformer sitting in place. Like I said, I'm going to push it all the way towards the front because I need all the room I can by these tubes. I'm going to take a square here, make sure it's going to clear. So all I need is for this panel to rest back at the front of the cabinet. And then uh, we'll mark new locations for the mounting holes. So one thing I want to point out is make sure to get this transformer as far forward as you can. Because as you can see, not a lot of room here between the KT66 and the housing of the transformer. We definitely don't want it to touch. We don't care if the front touches the cabinet. We sure don't want this touching the tubes. With the new locations marked here, here, and here, you can see that originally they had their uh, drill pattern off on the original transformer. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to drill three of them rather than the two that I initially thought. One thing I always do to make the job much easier and to make your target stay where it's supposed to be, start with a very small drill on your center punch, okay? So initially drill with that, that makes it perfectly centered, and then go back with your larger drill. 
Another uh, quick D-Lab trick. I'm a big fan of stepper bits. I always use a little bit of tap magic on them. Okay? And what's nice about the stepper bit is as you drill, it seats one step at a time to where your holes don't get out of control and you strike things underneath. So if you haven't bought a stepper bit yet, you should invest in one. All right, well the update is complete. Transformer is wired in. And I did have to uh, change the resistor in the bias supply to make these tubes happy. Also added a bias pot, which is adjustable from the top side with a test point. And this wire goes over to a one ohm resistor to ground off the cathode of one of the output tubes so you can watch your current and the amp fires up. So let's do that. She's on. I'm going to turn on standby. And watch the current coming up on that tube. Alrighty. She's almost there. I set it for approximately 40 milliamps. That's where I normally set these things. Now uh, you can see, I'm going to reach under side here and we can tweak that current. Okay, so I can take it down, take it up, set it to about 40. So the next step, we're going to take this amp and do a live demonstration of it and see how she sounds. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, video of how to convert your Marshall 100 watt EL34 type amp into a K66 amp. Next, of course, we'll put her on the air, see how it sounds. But now let me give you one word of warning. Don't take KT66s and put them in your current Marshall amp because the bias will be wrong and that output transformer is also wrong. If you do that, you're going to have a force fire. All right? So in a while, we'll get the other video going show what she sounds like. Hopefully it sounds like a gigantic fender on steroids. Thanks for tuning in.